Hi, I'm Fernando Pereira, a professor at UFMG in Brazil, and uh, today I will talk about the paper Reducing the Overhead of Exact Profiling by Reusing Affine Variables, which I wrote in cooperation with Leon Forreno from UNS Lyon. <coughs> the goal of this paper is given by the title, so we want to reduce the overhead of profiling using variables uh, to replace profiling counters. Um, let's imagine that I have a program that takes some time to run. Once we instrument this program to profile it, the counters that track the execution frequency of program sites will increase the running time of the program. This growth is in running time due to profiling counters is what we call the overhead of profiling. And the goal of this paper is to reduce this overhead. There will still be some overhead, but it will be smaller than without our technique. To illustrate what our paper does, I shall use this program. It counts the number of zeros in an array, but its semantics is not very important to this presentation. We are interested in answering this question. What is the execution frequency of each point of the program? Or, in other words, how often each edge of this program, um, of the program's control flow graph, was traversed during its execution. So, uh, let me pose this question to you. How many counters would we need to find the exact number of times that each edge of the program CFG was traversed during execution? A counter is just a variable that we increment whenever an edge is visited by the program flow. In principle, we could add one counter to each edge of the program CFG. That would give us seven counters. One variable will track the execution frequency of each edge of the program. However, we can do better. For instance, the first edge from L0 to L2 will be traversed only once. Same for the last edge from L2 to LD. No counter is needed for these edges. But can we still do better? As a matter of fact, we can reconstruct counters as functions of other counters. For instance, L2 to L6, the sum of L6 to L9, plus L6 to LA. In other words, the flow that enters a basic block should equal the flow that leaves it. Indeed, a well-formed profile abides by Kirchhoff's uh, circuit law. The incoming flow equals the outgoing flow. Based on this observation, we require two counters to build a perfect profile for this program. Let us call these counters x0 and x1. We increment x0 at L9 and increment x1 at LA. Kirchhoff's circuit law leads to a very beautiful result in computer science. Some people call it the Knuth Stephenson's algorithm. To build an optimal profile, you need to instrument the complement of the edges of a minimum spanning tree of the program's CFG. This result is very pretty and useful. You can find a citation to Knuth's paper in the LVM source code, for instance. You can find it in both source code as well. The trick of the minimum spanning tree is well known. I think that the first paper to mention this result is due to Nahapishan. I think that was published a bit before Knuth's paper. But anyway, can we do better? Can we use less counters than the complement of the minimum spanning tree? The goal of this paper is to show that such is possible. To show how that's possible, let us get back to our example which uses two counters. The minimum spanning tree has five edges, thus only two are left to instrument. Consider this counter x1. It is incremented at LA. Now consider this variable i, which is also incremented at LA. It contains uh, three definitions because our program is in static single assignment form. Perhaps you can convince yourself that i1 has the same value as x1 once the program terminates. So, we could use i1 to replace x1. Now, consider x0, which is incremented in L9. Now, consider sum, 
Sum has four definitions in the SSA form program. And the value of sum1 is the same as the value of x0 once the program terminates. So in practice, we can instrument this program with zero counters, but reusing variables that are already in the program. Now the important question becomes which variables can replace counters? A variable can replace a counter if the variable is incremented by some constant whenever the counter is incremented. In other words, all the increments on the variable must be counter-equivalent to the increment of the counter. Two program sites are uh, counter-equivalent if the first dominates the second and the second dominates uh, the first. So in principle, we could test for counter-equivalent uh, counter equivalence between all the affine variables, which are incremented by constants, I mean, and all the counters. But that might be too much. Um, we can focus on the program variables and find those that have increments that are all control equivalent to each other. We call these variables single entry, single exit counters, or CZ counters for short. CZ counters are set of variables whose dependencies form circuits in the dependence graph of the program. They have some restrictions. Either they are defined by phi functions or they are defined by increments. And all the increments must form CIS regions. The notion of CIS region that we use in our paper comes from an earlier work by Johnson from 1994. As an example, variable sum in the program on the right is a CZ counter. But we will not dive into details of in this presentation. Basically, this restriction of CIS regions is to ensure that all the increments of the variable must be control equivalent. Notice that a CZ counter can have multiple increments as long as they are all control equivalent. We need them to be control equivalent so that we can infer the value of a counter as an affine function of the CZ variable, like in this example here, where we can infer the execution frequency of L7 to L1. So summarizing, CZ counters are sets of variables related by phi functions whose dependencies form circuits like sum1, sum2, and sum3 in this example. And all the increments are control equivalent. We call a CZ counter the variable that is defined at the header of the loop where the circuit exists. In the example, it's sum1. CZ counters have many properties that are interesting for profiling. For instance, if a V is a CZ counter, then the execution frequency of the edge that determine the CZ region are a function of this value. Another property is that a CZ counter replaces exactly one knuth stephenson's counter. You can find proofs of these statements in our paper. Now I would like to show you some results in terms of overhead reduction due to CZ counters. Let us um, compare the running time of programs from the LVM test suite. In this case, without any profiling, programs optimized at the minus one optimization level take about one second to run on average. Once we add profiling, and we have done that using LLVM, using Knut Stephenson's instrumentation, this number increases to 1.13 seconds as the median running time. If we remove some of the KS counters and replace them with CZ counters, then the median running time drops to 1.08 seconds. That means that in our setting, the overhead of exact profiling at the minus 01 optimization level is about 10%. But notice that variance in the setting is high. Running time might, might vary too much. So we have repeated the experiment, but it's time counting fetch it x86 instructions. To this end, we took about 1000 programs from the Jotai collection of benchmarks. These are small programs mined from open source repositories. Each benchmark is just a function with a loop plus a driver to run it, so that makes it easy to count fetched instructions. And we count fetched instructions with CFJ Greened, which is a VL Greened plugin. It's able to count instructions per function, and this number has zero variance. So let's see what we get for 950 programs from Jotai, considering the number of fetched x86 instructions. Without any profile, each function causes about 
1.5 thousand instructions to be processed per function. With KS counters, this number goes up to 1.8 thousand instructions. And by replacing some KS counters with uh, CC counters, we reduce this number to 1.6 thousand instructions. Notice that the overhead drops from 19 to 4%. This observation let us conclude that these counters are effective at reducing the overhead of exact profiling. And notice that they are not restricted to integer variables. For instance, the pointer p in this program is a CC counter, which our implementation is able to reuse. This implementation is available for public usage in this repository. We welcome people to check out the code and contribute to it. And with that, I conclude my presentation. Thank you very much.